Welcome. I'm Gary Cassera. I've been working with dogs professionally for over a decade now, and I want to help you save money on pet products. Do you have a pet product you'd love me to review? Send it on over. I'll give you my honest feedback. Stay tuned to the end, and I'll share a little secret about how to use a plain old slip lead and turn it into a muzzle. It's a great thing to have in case of emergency. In this video, we will be talking about muzzles. The goods, the bads, and why we need them. They're very, very important for people working with their dogs. One thing about using muzzles is you wanna be honest about how you feel when you're using the muzzle. Dogs know that and will respond accordingly. Dogs don't know if muzzles are good, bad, scary, or that they're actually there to help them get over their problem. One of the things my mentor always said was, muzzles on mean the human is moving in the right direction. Remember that when you see people in public, they're trying to do the best that they can. It means they're being responsible as dog owners. Remember, they're moving in the right direction. Not all dogs wear muzzles because they're aggressive. They can be undergoing training. They may be nervous. They may have never acted aggressively or bitten someone in their whole life. They may just be a breed type that's required to wear them. So please educate yourself before you pass judgment onto somebody else. We don't want people to feel insecure about using muzzles. They're great tools and keep everybody safe. Now we've all seen those muzzles out there that owners get that look less intimidating. They have colors on them or bird beaks, multicolored tapes, sparklers, stickers, and paint galore. And here's why that works. After reading an article recently, one thing that stood out of how other people's behavior changed when they saw dogs out in public wearing muzzles. People reported back that other owners seemed to keep more control of their dog when walking near the muzzled dog. Others stated that people actually went into panic. They would call their dog scary or dangerous, all because they were wearing a muzzle trying to make everyone else safe. It's a stigma that needs to change. It holds back innocent people from really helping their dogs. Why I find them so valuable. Liability keeps you from getting sued. Have you ever had a dog that actually bit someone? Another dog? It's terrible. I would never want anybody to feel that. The stress, the fear, the anxiety, the frustration, anger, confusion, helplessness. Who the hell wants all that? I'll be over here with my muzzled dog, thank you. Another reason is the owner needs it. In my experience, more owners actually need the muzzles than the dog. It's so valuable for those people. It reduces their fear. That way the dog doesn't feed off any emotion that their owner is having. They can work through the process together safely. You can gauge the intentions of the dog don't be confused. Just because a dog has a muzzle on, he will still bite somebody or will try to bite someone. So if your dog has a muzzle and is continuing to try to attack people, it's a good indication of how intense he or she is. Some people have to do it because it's obeying the state law. Some dogs are required by the state because of their breed or previous situations. So they're court mandated. What if the dog's new to you? You recently adopted a dog you want to bring them to a family party, it'd be smart to put a muzzle on. Let's see how they react in all these different situations with all the different excitement. What if you can't get to the trainer you need to get to for a few weeks? If you have a leash biter, if you have a dog that's eating random things on the floor, territorial aggression in the house, there's so many different uses before you can actually get to your trainer and figure out how to solve the problem together. One of the common complaints I get from friends is people always want to pet my dog. They want to pet my dog. Well, one of the things I learned in the article I mentioned was people were less likely to pet your dog if the dog had a muzzle on. So why not put a muzzle on your dog and people might stay away. How about you just had a baby and you need to take a shower. Let's put a muzzle on the dog if we're going to leave them both out together. Safety first. Emergencies like the unfortunate floods and hurricanes we've been experiencing here in the United States and a lot of people have been experiencing around the world. 
They're high stress situations for your dog. You might have to pick them up, move them. Strangers might have to grab them. Another great example for muzzles. Socializing with unfamiliar things. What if you go to visit your sister and she's now into rabbit breeding? Has your dog been experienced around rabbits? Muzzle them. Avoiding injuries or if the dog's in pain after a surgery, it's a great time to use a muzzle to keep them away from the area. Or if you have to manipulate and do something that might cause pain. Is your dog a little nervous? Maybe going to a new environment might be a little bit overstimulating for them. Putting a muzzle on might help you relax so that you can be more free in the environment and let the dog explore. It reduces the stress for both of you. Groomer, it's another great opportunity to keep everybody safe. And I'm sure there'll be a million other reasons. Feel free to leave those in the comments. I'd love to know why you recommend muzzles to clients or if you're using muzzles yourself. So there's six places we're gonna take measurements. Some of the things I look for is, how long is the dog going to be wearing the muzzle? Is it for 15 minutes or is it going to be for an hour? The intensity of the behavior. I don't wanna use a mesh muzzle when I really need a leather muzzle. Big difference with the intensity of a dog. I'd wanna use a more sturdy muzzle then. The durability needed. Is this something that you're only gonna use once every eight weeks when the dog goes for grooming? Or is it something that you're gonna be using daily? First, let's talk about the mesh muzzle. It's very common, a lot of people get this muzzle first. It's inexpensive, it looks less intimidating. What is it good for? It keeps the dog's mouth completely shut. So there's absolutely no chance they're gonna be able to just get like a little sneaky bite. It's gonna completely close around their mouth. Inexpensive. They range under $20. There's multiple sizes you can get from, I think like it's like a one to like a five or a six. So you can get a little tiny dog up to a big, big dog. They have this soft mesh construction. They have a padding here around the nose. And like I said, there's lots of varying in sizes. Some of the drawbacks of this muzzle, it only has one strap. So the safety, again, it depends on how intense the dog is. It's just gonna lock right be behind their head. And I've seen dogs put their feet in and pop the muzzles right off. So you wanna be careful with this muzzle using it on a more intense dog. Limits the dog's ability to the drink and pant. So their mouth is gonna be completely closed. So I wouldn't wanna use this muzzle for more than five to 10, 15 minutes at most. If you're inside and it's a nice cool condition, I definitely would limit the time that the dog's wearing this muzzle, especially in heat have to be very, very careful because you're taking away one of their resources to um, cool themselves down by panting. The good old leather muzzle. I use, this is a new one, but I use these more than anything. For me, I could spend $20 on this mesh muzzle, or if you follow the link below, you can get one of these for 60. It's gonna last you way longer than this thing. Just a, you know, again, it depends on what you need. This has good ventilation for panting. It has all these cuts on the sides, big open holes at the bottom. The dog completely can open their mouth and pant as needed. This model in particular has great padding around the nose. I really, really love how comfortable this fits. I've never had a problem with any dog on the nose. So, so comfortable and soft. Some of the dogs that come to our daycare they're not always angels. They might wear these a few days in a row as we're introducing them to different situations and environments. So again, I really like the, the build quality and the cushion. Very, very safe. So you can see this one has two buckles. So this one goes around the head and then this one also comes up from the nose and attaches to the collar so that the dog can't pull it off. So I really, really love these for that two-part system of extra safety. These particularly, I love the way they're built. Nice, strong rivets, good quality stitching. Very, very good quality stitching. The sizing is very, very good. Um, this particular one is a medium, and I can fit anything from a smaller German Shepherd, Border Collies, 
labs, all different head sizes fit comfortably. Lastly, again, if you're dealing with human aggression, if you're trying to stop something, I can't put my fingers in there. I'm gonna show you the next muzzle, and that's one of the things I don't like about that, is if I have to actually, something happens and I have to get near the dog's face, my fingers could get in there. So some of the drawbacks of this muzzle is it's um, very stiff. If you're having a new dog meet other dogs, they can, it can seem a little rude to the other dogs. They come in to sniff, it uh, can break that contact. So you just wanna be careful there. Dogs can drink if they put their face in it. I mean, I'd still be very careful. I don't want the dogs wearing these for like hours at a time, obviously, but it is possible to drink through them. There's the holes here, and I have seen dogs just slam their face in it and start drinking. And obviously, if you're using any kind of leather conditioner on there, which I don't personally, you definitely don't want them drinking out of it. Those chemicals get into the water and they ingest it. Um, for me, I wouldn't use them anyway because I don't even want the fumes and things that they're breathing. Dogs' noses are very sensitive, obviously. These are handmade, so the sizing isn't always the same. If I order five mediums, they're a little different. They're close, but there's, you know, they're always a little bit different. Lastly, it's impossible to see what the dog's mouth is doing. So when they're around other dogs at first, you can't see what their mouth is doing. Are they getting tense? Are they showing teeth? Are they snarling? So you really want to take in the whole picture and look at the eyes and the ears. So that's just something to be cautious of. The last muzzle I'm going to talk about are these rubber basket muzzles. The good thing about these, great airflow. Look at that. The dogs can drink completely. It's rubber, so it's softer, a little bit more flexible. They're relatively inexpensive, under $35. There's tons of different sizes. This is a two, this is a four. They go up to five or six if you have a really big head size dog. And they go down into even a one if you had a chihuahua, something smaller. These also have that two buckle system, which I really like. So this goes behind the neck. Then this also connects to a collar. So if your dog has a regular buckle collar on, we'll attach this so that they can't pull it off. It also has this other loop under the bottom where you can put the collar through. So then it's really gonna be tough for the dog to get it off. I personally um, get a little flabbergasted that this is my own pet peeve. I've heard trainers telling people to remove this. Why would you remove that? I mean, it, it's there for a reason, it's safety. So give the people even more peace of mind by knowing they're not gonna be able to get this thing off. So sometimes when a dog's fighting the muzzle for the first time, if it's not properly introduced, they can start to scratch their face and then people get all freaked out. So number one, take your time when you're in introducing a dog to muzzles. But that is one of the things that, that isn't good about these is the dogs actually, their feet, their nails can get caught, all kinds of problems. Like I said before, they are soft and I have heard stories of this rubber over time breaking. It can get a little brittle. Just be careful as the muzzles get older that the rubber itself isn't getting brittle. That's one of the drawbacks with this muzzle is that your fingers can get in here. So if the dog's coming at you and you try to put your hand up, it's, eh. so for me, the muzzle, the leather muzzle in particular, when working with human aggression is huge. Bigger hole, soft rubber, you have to be careful. As promised, I have my lovely assistant here. We're gonna show you how to make a muzzle out of a regular old slip leaf. So it looks like a letter P. I'm gonna slide it right over her head. I'm gonna take the bottom and I'm gonna twist it. And I'm gonna put that right over her nose. And then slide that piece down. So you see how it's around her neck, but then also over her nose. And now if the dog has an injury, I have a safe way to protect her from making an error and me for getting bit. Thanks, Murphy. Thanks for checking out my video. I plan on reviewing lots and lots of pet products.
I'm excited to bring each one of those reviews to you. If there's anything in particular that you would like me to review, leave a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. If you aren't subscribed to the channel, come on over. There's nothing to be ashamed of. We love new people. I have hours and hours of free dog content to share with you. I'm excited to have you around.